the wind. If you listen, you can hear it right now. If we ever needed him before, we do. On behalf of the American High Rise Foundation, Syncor Entertainment, and the city of Branson, I would like to welcome all of you uh, to, this, to this wonderful, wonderful theater, the Grand Palace. As you know, this is a sad day as we remember the tragic events of a year ago, but today is also a day when we can celebrate the American spirit that will always be victorious no matter what we face. And our theme for this ceremony is in memory of angels and heroes. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the colors to begin our ceremony, the Missouri State Highway Patrol Honor Guard. There's a wonderful song that the Oak Ridge Boys do in their show. It's called Thank God for Kids. Our kids, as you know, are the future. And it's a real joy to have a group from the New Life Academy in Hollister lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Children? I pledge Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to just be here this morning. Lord, we remember what took place just a year ago and how our lives were changed. But Lord, I thank you today that you have changed our lives. Lord, in a time when we need you more than ever, I thank you for this great country. I thank you for the unveiling of this thing that clearly states on the wall quarter acre in size it says we're still and always will remain one nation under you we thank you for those that have given their lives and those are the ones that we honor today as well as we honor those who have survived there have been great attacks upon us physically as a nation but also there's been attacks against our beliefs our core beliefs and those we will fight for and we will win <laughs> in your name and in the name of jesus christ we pray amen, amen. good morning and then on behalf of my family and syncor entertainment i'd like to welcome you all this morning each and every one of you for joining us for this historic unveiling of american high-rise artwork this piece of artwork is a beacon to this nation and this world of who we are as americans and what we stand for one nation under God, and united we stand. I'd like for you to welcome the mayor of the live entertainment capital of the world, Branson, Missouri, ladies and gentlemen, Lou Schaefer. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> On behalf of our board of aldermen and our other city officials, and by the way, most of them are here today, we welcome you to this event and say thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to be here this morning. September 11, 2001 changed everything. The way we view our country and our faith as our nation still works through the healing process and wonders what lies ahead, Americans are finding comfort in their faith and expressing patriotism like never before. Like other Americans across our country, we remember and honor those killed on September 11th, and our hearts are here in Branson, go out to all the families and friends of those victims. That day, and those who lost their lives, simply because they were Americans, will never be forgotten. Richard and I, when we became friends, he started making a drawing, and he just became, you know, it engulfed with this thing. He was actually out hosting the gong show on the road for us, and the drawing actually started on a napkin, on an American airline napkin, if you will. And he made this drawing, and it was just wonderful what he did. And I can only tell you that there are some people in this world that, that you meet them, and, and they leave an impression upon you for life. And 
I don't know, you know, guys don't have many good friends, but I have a really, really good friend. And I want you to meet him. His name is Richard Daniel Clark. What a great day to be in America, eh? Oh, huh? <laughs> There's never been a challenge that has been overcome by being timid. And there's never been a vision that ever came to reality without people seeing the vision, sharing it, and making it happen. And that's what's happened here this morning. After 25 years working on a napkin doodle, it has gone into world history, and now it comes back to be installed on a giant display on a building that in 1977, when the image started, as innocently as it did as I was flying past Manhattan and the Statue of Liberty, to be on a building that wasn't even built at the time in 77 in a town that I was not aware of. But here we are. There's so many people across the country and around the world who, people like Ted Koppel, who when they first received a presidential print, when it was selected to commemorate the bicentennial inaugural of a, of a, of a, of a wonderful man, uh, President George Bush Sr. I know, Mr. President, you're watching this by television and by video. And I want to tell you that from all of us here in the heartland of America, we salute you and that wonderful son that you have given to freedom. Thank you, Mr. President Barber. Let me tell you, what happened at 9-11 was not an American thing. We tend to get caught up in semantics about it's an American thing. No, it's not. It's a world freedom thing. Let me remind you that when those towers toppled a year ago today in New York City, in those buildings who were sacrificed were the citizens of 60 nations. History is written that when good intersects with evil, good wins. And we will win with the help of God. And to George W. Bush, we are, we're praying with you. I'll read a letter if I can. Uh, so as you gather to mark the tragic events of September 11th, Barbara and I join you in remembering the innocent victims and in honoring the many heroes of that sad day. The events of 9-11 have left an indelible mark on our history, touching the lives of all Americans. However true to American spirit, we rose to the challenge, demonstrating a show of unity and resolve that stands as a vivid reminder to the whole world of the decency and the strength that is the United States of America. We will never forget the victims and heroes of 9-11. Their lives are honored by freedom and democracy that are a hallmark of our country and that no terror will be able to undermine. Your gathering today is a fitting reminder of those cherished rights. God bless the United States, signed George Bush, Sr. Three nights. I dedicate this prayer for every veteran of the military, firefighters, and law enforcement that are here with us this morning. God bless you, and God bless America. God of our fathers, whose almighty hand has made and preserved this nation, please grant that our people will understand. May they always remember how bitterly our freedom was won the down payment that was made for it, the installments been made since the Republic was born, and the price that still must be paid to hold on to our freedom. May liberty be seen not as the right to do as we please, but as the opportunity to please and to do what is right. And may it be ever understood that our liberty is under God, Ladies and gentlemen, it can be found nowhere else. And may our faith be something that's not really stamped upon a coin, but expressed in our lives and our hearts and our very souls. And let us as a nation not be afraid of standing alone for the rights of men and women since we were born that way is the only nation that came into being for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith. To the extent that America will honor thee, will thou bless our nation and keep us free. And dear Lord, make us good as thou hast made us so rich. I pray this for every veteran. God bless you and God bless the United States of America. It is with great pride.
that I introduce the granddaughter of President Dwight David Eisenhower, Mary Eisenhower. Not only does Richard's mural depict Richard's soul, but it reflects the whole of America, the spirit of the United States. And if the angels of September 11th, 2001, didn't leave any other gift, they left a wake-up call. We instantly became defragmented. We all shared the grief. We became one nation under God. Funny, about six months later, we heard that that phrase may not be constitutional. When I read about these things, it makes me want to scratch my head. I may not be American by choice, but I thank God every day for the right to be American. Yeah. And no matter how they trim or hide the truth in the Pledge of Allegiance, mine will always say, one nation under God. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to unveil the American High Rise Monument. The image first selected in 1989 to commemorate the bicentennial inaugural of President George Bush Sr. It's been accepted by the leaders of 73 nations, representing almost three quarters of humanity. It's on display at hundreds of locations all across the nation and the planet. And American High Rise.